me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we're going to begin to talk about tonight, probably for a couple of weeks, maybe three, the doctrine of the Lord's Supper. Uh, as a pastor, I have to say, sometimes it burdens my heart. I'm not, I'm not preaching to you because you're the choir, you're here. But it burdens my heart that I oftentimes hear, well, we're just doing the Lord's Supper tonight, I'm not going to come. Do, do you un- I know you're not saying that, but do they understand what they're saying? The Lord's Supper is just, a, just as much an ordinance that God has given us as baptism. And I, I don't know really any genuinely born-again, blood-bought believer that would say baptism is not important. Uh, it's not, it doesn't bring salvation, but it is the outward mark of an inward transaction in our lives. Then I've said it over and over again. I'd not give you a nickel for someone's salvation that are not willing, if physically possible, to follow the Lord and believe in baptism. I'm just, I mean, that's just the first act of obedience. Uh, and another act of obedience is observing the Lord's Supper. I, 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 I want you to remember as we begin to read and as we look at this text that oftentimes we, 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 can, we can also learn some principles in the first part of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, when it talked about men's part in worship and women's part in worship and the covering of the head and the uncovering of the head, I think that the basic principle that, that we learn from that text, there's a lot of truths that we learn from that text that we saw that we've looked at the last several weeks, but the basic principle that we learn is the principle of authority. Who's in charge? And the truth of the matter is, I'm not in charge, you're not in charge, God's in charge. But oftentimes we live our lives as if we're in charge. We're going to take the realm. We, we're going to call the shots. And every time we call the shots and every time we take the realm, every time we take the rain, then we mess up. My one-on-one Bible study, the men that never read through the Bible were going through. The basic principle of the Old Testament is God is trying to bring us as his people to the place that we will obey. We don't have to understand just simply obey. We, we, we don't have to know all the answers uh, uh, of the questions. All, all we've got to know is we know that our God has all the answers. Amen? So, Lord, we're just trusting in you. I have to be honest with you. I mean, I, 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 do, I do probably not trying to justify it, just like all of us worry too much. Lord, I'm worrying. Are we going to be able to find Logan a house? Well, there's plenty of houses in, in BB, but you don't, Bob, you don't have to worry about it. That's not your job. I mean, you're the agent that God's going that, that yo, Logan has been trying. You know, you look for me a house. I've I've talked to some people who have real estate. You, you, you can you can talk, but you don't worry about it. I've got it. I already I already know the house. Aren't you thankful for that? Uh, you know, uh, uh, God, what are we going to do when Logan goes out there? We got to have money. Got to have a lot of money. We, we don't have a lot of money. Don't worry about it. I got a lot of money. No, I'm not, I'm not saying to you, don't worry about it, I've got a lot of money. God's saying to me, don't worry about it, I've got a lot of money. You believe that? So it's not our responsibility. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're to do our part. And we're, we're, to, we're, we're to be givers in our part. But, but God is saying in the very first part of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, don't worry about it, I've got it. That's, it's easy for us to say on this side, but sometimes it's hard to practice that in our everyday life. Don't worry about it. God says, I've got it, a principle of authority. Well, that same principle can follow us through the Lord's Supper. Look in verse 17. Now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you since you come together. Listen to this. I don't know if this disturbs you or not. But you come together not for the better, but for the worse. I mean, almost in a way, don't, 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 don't start throwing stones, but almost it's harming you to come to church. You never thought you'd hear that said from a preacher, right? Coming for the wrong reason. You got, you got to understand that, that their philosophy or their thought in Corinth of the Lord's Supper is almost entirely different than what we do when we observe the Lord's Supper. D- different churches have different practices and different philosophies. One church that I pastored, and when we observed the Lord's Supper, they, they, they felt like, and I'm not, not, not arguing this, they felt like it was such a, a solemn occasion. It was almost as if, as if when you came to the night that you observed the Lord's Supper, you walked in, you didn't say anything, 
you observed the Lord's Supper, you walked out, you didn't say anything. Now, I'm not being critical of that. I'm just saying that we have developed different traditions and different philosophies concerning the Lord's Supper. They had made it at Corinth. They had made it a love feast. They referred to it as an agape feast. That is, not only was it a time that they partook of the elements that we will talk about in the next couple of weeks, the broken, reminding them of the broken body and the shed blood of the Lord Jesus, but they looked at it as a time of a wide-range variety of potluck. Any of you like potluck? Well, even their potluck was somewhat different than our potluck. Uh, at least it should be. You know, we, we, we bring ours and you know, we, we just set it down, and it doesn't make any difference who gets the cornbread or who gets the beans, you know, other than make sure I get mine first. But you, it doesn't make any who gets it, we share it with all. But in that society, that there seems to be, I'm not, I'm not saying for sure, but there seems to be a, a different philosophy concerning class. We, we are richer than you. There are people in Corinth that were very wealthy. They had all kind of money, so they would bring an abundance of food. And, and the idea, the thought that, 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 that the scholars believe that, that, that right about the history of Corinth, the, the thought is that they would gather in a separate, separate section of the church and they'd have all of their food. They'd have all kind of food, luxurious foods. I mean, more than they needed, and they would gorge themselves. They would stuff themselves. While over here on the other side, they didn't have anything but peanut butter and jelly, and they just... Maybe some of them even went home hungry. And what, what, what I think that if I understand the, 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 the rest of this passage of Scripture is that this, you've made the Lord's Supper something that it's not supposed to be. Could I, could I take that a step further? Go like this, because I'm going to. I'm not for sure the principle is this, that I think that maybe sometimes in church we We've made it something it's not supposed to be. Amen or oh me? I mean, we, we, we have the idea that this is the, this is the way that we like things. Uh, this is the order of the church. This is what's in the bulletin. This is what we've always done. This is what we need to always do. And the truth of the matter is, this, if this is what we've always done and it's not working any longer, do something else. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying change just for change's sake. But so many t sometimes we, we get too stuck in tradition. Uh, I, I've used this before. Maybe most of you have, uh, have, 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 have forgot about this. But did you know the primary reason why churches, particularly in the South, chose 11 o'clock on Sunday to have worship? It was to accommodate the, the, the milking ske schedule of the dairy farms. Now, I don't, I mean, I'm not saying that we don't need to have worship services at 11 o'clock, but I don't think we have a dairy farmer in our church any longer. But yet we're still having it to accommodate their schedule. I mean, w would we be willing? I'm, I'm not making any recommendation. Don't vote me out. W would we be willing to have worship service at 8 o'clock in the morning if, it would bring, if we knew it would bring more people here? We, we, we should be willing and ready to do whatever we want. We, we've made some of the very same things that they have done. And, and Paul begins, he, if you'll notice in the first part of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he, he was praising them for some certain things in their lives. But now in verse 17, now in giving these instructions, these that I'm about to give you, I do not praise you since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. Class of people race of people uh, you know you, you know as well as I, I at least I hope you do regardless of the color of her skins we're all the same on the inside when, when, we, when we look at it I don't, you argue all you want to but there's only one race and that's the human race it's not there's not Caucasians and African Americans and and Hispanics there's one race that's a human race we're all the same we're all the same. But yet in that day, I mean, we can't worship with them because they're Jewish. We can't worship with them because whatever they may be, uh, th 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 they're from Samaria. We can't worship with them. Why? That, that's the problem that I have today. 
And they seem to be successful with all of these specialty churches popping up all over the place. Now, don't get wrong. I'm not mad. I'm not vindicative. I'm always praising God regardless of what, a ch what church you go to as long as a person has had a legitimate born-again experience. But where do we draw the line? And I'm, 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 I'm going to use this as an illustration. You know, we have cowboy churches and we have motorcycle churches and we have outdoor churches and what, what would be the difference of having firemen churches and, mo and, and teacher churches and administrator churches and painter churches and carpenter churches and electrician churches? I thought it was all supposed to be one. I thought, I thought that when it comes to the house of God, that, that, that we ought to place aside all differences that we have because the house of God, this is a place of worship. This is a place that we declare the truth of the Word of God. This is the place that we say, thus saith the Lord. Now, I'm kind of veering from, from, from this text, though I am, I am looking at the principle of this text. He said, I'm not praising you in this because you've not come for the better. You've come for, you've come for yourself rather than come for God. I'm, I'm telling you, we need to get back to the place in our life of church that we come for one reason. For the honor and for the glory and for the praise of Jesus. The Lord's Supper is not necessarily for you, but the Lord's Supper is for Him simply because He told us to do it. We ought to have a time that we set aside that when we come for this worship service, we remember His broken body. We remember His shed blood. We remember what it took to bring about an eternal redemption for our souls. It's crucial for us as believers to understand how it is to be observed. This passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 17 through 34 is a, uh, is a, 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 a great passage. It is a thorough passage concerning the doctrine of the Lord's Supper. It should be thoroughly studied. That's the reason I want to spend two or three weeks on the study of the Lord's Supper. Number one, we've been talking about just a little bit. Verse 17, Paul rebuked the Corinthians by the way that they were celebrating the Lord's Supper. Um, that, the, 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 this is not a, a, common, a common argument today. Uh, the, the common argument today in, in, in churches, not only Southern Baptist churches, but churches of all kind, you, you know, I'm not preaching to you. You know the common the common argument is the style of music. I mean, it's it it splits church. Uh, well, we we like a piano. We like the bongos. We don't like the drums. We don't. Hey, when we're doing this, we're not doing it for you or me. We're doing it for God. Amen. And I I, I have my preferences. Uh, I have styles of music that I like and I don't like. I, it, it, would, it would be more difficult for me to uh, worship in a style that was, you know what I'm saying, rap music. If it was all rap music, I just don't, I don't know how I could, I mean, I don't know if I could do it. Maybe because I just, just don't understand it. But I have to, I have to be honest with you. I, I have heard some rap gospel songs that have ministered to my heart. I have heard some. I don't understand the, you know, I don't, I don't understand the, I don't even know the words Miss Linda to use. The, I don't know if it's the rhythm or the lyrics or the spitting or the pulling or the whatever. I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to be, and then in the same way, I'm just not, I'm not really a, I don't start throwing stones at me. I'm not a country and western guy, you know. I just, uh, it's just, that's just not my bag. It's, it's your bag of tea if you want to sing country and western or uh, what's it, bluegrass. You know, the style really shouldn't bother us. One, one Junior Hill is probably the most sought after or has been the most sought after evangelist in Southern Baptist circles for the last 20 years. It's just absolutely amazing. This guy is just a, an amazing pulpiteer. And he preached a message probably 10 years ago. Uh, and it, it not, Still not outdated. He said, has it ever dawned on you that God, y all, y all, music people, y'all got to help me. 
God wrote the words of the songs that they sang in the, in the, in the Psalms, the, the 150 Psalms are songs that they sang, but he did not write, what's the word? The lyrics is not, it, the, mu- the words are the lyrics, okay? He did not write the chords, the beat. The beat. Oh, you know, I, I don't know, you know. They, they look and say, you know, a couple of weeks ago they looked and said, what key is that in? And I'm thinking, well, are they talking about Billy or Aladdin? I don't know you. No, I, I, know, more than, I know more than that. God, God wrote the words. And, and we, we need to look at the words of how they minister to our hearts. More importantly, they're ministering to their heart. Do they minister to the hearts of the Lord Jesus? We're lifting our hearts and our voices in praise to God. He, he had praised them for their diligence in keeping the traditions and customs of the church in verse 2. But in, the, but, in the, but in dealing with the Lord's Supper, he says, I praise you not. I declare, listen to this word, I declare this word means command. I command you that there's something you've got to listen to. You have got to listen to God when it comes to the observance of the Lord's Supper. I believe that there's ever a time that we need to be right in worship. We need to be right in worship. When we observe the Lord's Supper, you read it. Some of you have slept. Some of you died because you've come in it nonchalantly because it's just something that we do. We're looking around wondering. And I, 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 know, I know what I believe on who should observe the Lord's Supper. Um, I'll just go ahead and let you know at the beginning of this. I believe that the Lord's Supper is for the local church. If you'll, if you'll look at Jesus' institution of the Lord's Supper uh, in, in the Gospels when he instituted it, he did not invite every believer. Everybody was not invited to come. The only ones that came to that first observance of the Lord's Supper is what scholars call the incipient church, the 12 apostles. They were the only ones that were invited. They, they, were, they were the incipient church. So I, I believe that the the Lord's Supper should be observed by the, the, the local church. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some churches that would say, well, if you're not a member tonight, we're observing the Lord's Supper, you need to get up and leave, or we're going to pass over you. That's, I don't think you should be rude or unchrist like I'm just tell you what to believe. I believe that that's what the Scripture says. We need to hold truth to Scripture. But, but he said, I'm praising you not. I'm commanding you that you play, that you play, that you play, that you play, Pay close attention to what the Scripture says. Because, listen, listen closely. It doesn't make any difference what Southern Baptists say. It doesn't make any difference what Independent Baptists or Landmark Baptists say. It doesn't make any difference what the Pentecostals say. Well, what did God say? Amen? Well, I've always been taught, well, maybe we might need to be retaught. I'm not saying that we do, but what I'm trying to say is that we need to be aware of what the Bible says concerning the Lord's Supper. He says, now in this, the Lord's Supper, I command you, I'm not praising you. It's, it's, a, it's a very forceful word. And he stresses, listen to this, the awesome importance of the observation of the Lord's Supper. Awesome importance. Now, you come together to celebrate the Lord's Supper not for better, not to edify yourself by remembering the Lord's death, but you come together for worth, you're coming down, you're tearing down yourself because you are thinking you're better than someone across the pew or you're looking and seeing that someone sh- should not is not observing it and you're wondering why they're not observing it or you're seeing someone that is observing it and you think they should not. Our focus should be right here. Amen? That's, that's the reason most of the time, I'm not saying this to call attention to myself, but that's the reason most of the time when we're up here observing the Lord's Supper and the elements get into the hands of the deacons, I kneel down. I'm, I'm kneeling, I'm praying, I'm, I'm focusing on me. This is a time of my worship. Uh, this is the time that I need to focus on me. Is there anything in my life that's not pleasing to you, Lord? Is there anything that I need to work on? Anything that I need to do. I'm not looking around. Who and who's not? I don't go and say, well, I noticed that you did not observe because I didn't notice. I'm not looking. My, my, my human tendency 
would be like this air going. I've seen people do that. That's the reason I'm trying to kneel so that I can't even see others doing that. Because I see the awesome that they, the, 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 when I come to celebrate the Lord's Supper, it needs to be a time that builds me up, that lifts me closer to the Lord. Be a time that I remember what took place in my life on November the 16th, 1975. Someone asked me last night, he said, I was talking to a friend of yours, and he said that the night you were baptized, the church burnt down. Is that true? I said, yeah. In fact, my best friend and I, we were baptized, and the church burnt down, and Bob Ashley. And I really struggled with it for a while because, you know, I'd walk across the circle at Dice, or we was cleaning the church up and doing some things, and some pagans and lost people in church. And, hey, hey, I heard... I heard of the ceiling falling in when someone started the church, but I never heard someone church burning down when someone started. I mean, that's kind of hard on my ego. I mean, it's not an ego of mine, but it's kind of hard, you know. Went to my pastor. Well, pastor, you know, it's a fairly new church. Am I the reason? Pastor, Bobby and I, I mean, were, were we so bad? Were we so bad that, I mean, after we were baptized, God had to burn the building down? This is what the pastor said. We'll, we'll build a church every year if that's what it takes to see men and women, boys and girls, give their heart to Christ. It's not about us. And I'm afraid that we've made church about us. A couple of other things I see that we will see in the coming days. I'm excited about next week's lesson, in verses 18 through 23. We see how they had corrupted that. How... They took something that was pure and corrupted it. We, we see in verses 23 through 26 the real meaning of the Lord's Supper. The real meaning of the Lord's Supper. We see in verses 27 through 30 the severe consequences. The severe consequences of partaking unworthily of the Lord's Supper. And then verses 30, 31 through 20, 34 the right approach to the Lord's Supper. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get through that. Maybe a couple of Sundays, maybe Wednesday, maybe, maybe five. But we want to be true. We want to be faithful. We want to understand what we should do when we partake of this most holy element. I'm not going to argue that baptism is not... It, it, uh, baptism, baptism is important. And I can go as far as to say that the proper mode of baptism is important. But also the observance of the Lord's Supper is, is, is important as well. Any questions? Well, let's pray together. Father, thank you for today, for the opportunity you've given us to come and open your word. I pray in the coming weeks that, Lord, you'd open our eyes that we might behold wondrous truths that we need to hear and know from your word. Lord, if there's any thing that needs to be dealt with in our hearts and our lives, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would make it perfectly clear. And Father, if there needs to be adjustments in our lives individually, if there needs to be adjustments in our lives cooperatively, help us to do whatever it takes to make it right. Lord, I pray for a banner year this year in the WANA program. I pray that little boys and girls would give their heart to Jesus. Lord, I pray for a banner year in rescue program, Anchor. I pray that men and women, boys and girls, would give their heart to Christ as well. I pray that we'd all grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus and that we'd all be thankful that we've come to your house on a regular basis to learn more about you. For we pray in